Hi, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story, and today I wanted to show you something that I started messing around with yesterday. So this is not a tutorial, um, because I have limited idea of what I'm doing. This is more just a show and tell, and sort of, oh my gosh, isn't this so cool? And a sort of, does any of you out there do this? And if so, what, um, you know, show some pictures of your charms, um, and etc. Just so, just that kind of, this is cool, I want to show you <laughs> kind of video. So, I have seen in the past, uh, just here and there, you know, maybe on blogs or, you know, tweet, tweeter, <laughs> Twitter feeds or something along those lines. I have heard about charm casting. And in fact, I want to say in um, probably on Instagram, I have seen, you know, like a tarot card and then some charms cast on it sort of as an oracle card to go along with the tarot card. So I have heard of charm casting, which is, from what I can understand, sort of a spinoff or similar to the idea, a very, very old idea of um, bone casting. <clears throat> so it's quite similar um, idea to that, but obviously been um, updated a little bit with found objects. And, but then yesterday I stumbled on a blog post uh, from Little Red Tarot. Now it was a guest post uh, by Kristen and she has uh, so she did a post all about charm casting, and then she also has some posts on her blog um, itself as well. And so I'm putting links to those in the description box below uh, because <clears throat> that's, you know, where I started with all this. And she goes through a really nice, um, you know, kind of step-by-step -step and talking about, you know, kind of gathering your charms and all that kind of stuff. So please go um, to both those. Again, one of them is a guest post of hers on Little Red Tarot, and then one will be a link to her actual blog where she also has um, other posts about charm casting. So I started digging, you know, I, I was fascinated with it because of this. Uh, in, I don't know, I want to say in the blog post itself, she kind of mentions its relation to Lenormand, kind of, the reading style somewhat, as well as another link that um, she put, uh, made mention of where you could get like sets of charms that were already put together. Um, and, and I had gone to that particular link, which was sold out. Uh, it was quite pricey anyways, but it was sold out. Um, but it was... Um, basically a set of charms that you know each i um linked with the lenormand card with a with a lenormand card and so as soon as i you know i just kind of gathered some stuff that i had as well as took a run to uh joanne fabrics which is like a craft store in the united states and uh found a couple of little packets of i found these packets with um uh, words on them. There's 12 of them, but I kept uh, seven of them in rotation so far. I'm kind of playing around with which ones I'm going to actually use, but I kept these. So I found a couple multi-packs, you know, which would seem to be a quicker or a cheaper way, you know, to get a bunch of charms. Um, and then again, like I said, I had some bits and bobs uh, here myself um, that I kind of gathered anything that I thought was little that might be appropriate. And then I took a run to uh, Michael's today also and picked up a couple little packs too. Like I got, was able to get this, I love this fishing hook uh, look right here. Uh, so a couple again, you know, if you can find sets of like four or five at, you know, for $3 or so. You know, a couple I found little packets in the clearance bins. Um, so I was able to, to kind of um, get things together for... I want to say, because again, I had some stuff, you know, I had some stuff in cross-stitch bits and bobs from the past, um, the, a project that I was going to use, do that had like heirloom things, and then you were put little charms uh, in some of the empty boxes, so I had some charms from that, just miscellaneous things, like I had an I Ching coin, I thought that's great because it can be yin or yang depending on what side that it's on. Um, I think I just had this random little, you know, I have some of this stuff I just had random little bits, you know, obviously a penny and the nickel, uh, this little key I had, um, I, this was my grandmother's, my grandmother had a charm bracelet, and when she passed away, we all got, um, parts of her charm bracelet, and this was one of them that I got, as well as this that has my name, 
I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it's like a silhouette of a little girl and it has my name on it uh, that she got when I was born. Um, so I had that. Uh, this is an old uh, little ring that I, not little, I always think it was a finger ring. Yeah, I, wanna, <laughs> I, I used to wear them on all my fingers. Not all of them, but lots of them. Um, so that was, you know, it's kind of tarnished and everything. So I put that in there. Um, a stone I used. <clears throat> little bits and bobs that I had. These were from, I think, my father's uh, military. Uh, and these were some kind of military insignias. Um that I had. So again, some bits and bobs I had as well as some things that I um, picked up. So <clears throat> I'm going to show you what, what I do with this. But I, I, I put, have them split aside like this because my goal is um, to get the, a whole Norman set because I will say that the little bit of reading that I, I messed around with them yesterday, it reads so much like Lenormand because things kind of clump together and the things that are, you know, you kind of use proximity if things are in proximity, sort of directionality, you know, so like if the this little arrow is kind of pointing directly at something you know you kind of are looking at all those kinds of things it's to me fantastic so anyways i have a list of sort of the things that i have and some meanings that that they attached to themselves as i picked them up but then this is my uh, i made a list of the lenormand cards <clears throat> and then sort of which cards that i am you or which cards which items I'm using for those. So I still have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 or so uh, ones to try to fill in the blanks for a full Norman set because that's what I really do definitely want um, to accomplish. Um, but so this up here are the ones that I have set aside. I mean I'm going to mix them all together but these sort of fill the Norman. So I have right here I found this little silhouettes so there's a silhouette of a boy and a girl so those are my significators because you do kind of similar things where okay if you have a male and female significator what are the things around it is it flipped over you kind of look at all those kinds of things so you definitely want a significator so I have that so then I have here a clover um, for the clover I have this uh, circle that says journey that I'm using for the ship uh, right now I have oops I swapped these around I have this letter H that I'm using for house um, I have this tree it's a, a sort of a silver almost medallion it almost looks like so saint medallions that you get that has a tree of life on it that I'm using for the tree card I don't have a clouds I found this awesome snake uh, that I'm using obviously for the snake now for the coffin and also kind of for the scythe right now, that's sort of kind of cutting off the scythe. I actually think somewhere I have a little tiny hedgehog or porcupine. I know I have it somewhere. I'm trying to find that because it was for kind of a cross-stitch project that I never did. Because I could use that for this sort of prickly, painful situation <laughs> for the scythe. But I, I liked the idea of the lightning bolt. Uh, obviously, I don't know that I'm going to come across a coffin. There were some skulls and things, but I just like that idea of the kind of also reminds me of the tarot tower, that sort of quick end, quick change, something is ending, which is, you know, what the coffin is about. And so this to me works for that. So right now I'm using that. Um, I don't have anything for the bouquet or the scythe or the whips and the rod. Uh, for the birds, I'm using a bird. It's a single bird, but I still get the, you know, I understand the correlation. I'm using this uh, one of me as a child. I don't have a fox or a bear. I have a star here, this cute little, I don't even know if you're able to see these, but um, a little star. I don't have storks or a dog. I found this adorable for 50 cents because it was on clearance. This cute little clock tower that I'm using for the tower. For the garden, I'm, it's, this is kind of strange, but I'm using this, uh, I had this little green bead that uh, has sort of filigree on it, and it just made me think of, um, whatever, I don't know, but right now it's standing in for the garden for me. I have a stone here for obstacles or for the mountain. I got, I have this tea from my dad's, um, I believe it's from his uniform. And I have this I'm using for paths because, again, it has that, you know, the path card has where you're coming from and then it branches into your kind of two choices. And that kind of reminded me of that. So that's what I'm going with. 
it works. I so then of course I have um, I don't have the mice yet, so I have this uh, heart here. I have a ring, I already pointed out. I don't have a book or a letter yet. The gentleman and lady I already see up here. I don't have the lilies. And then I have this, I found this set uh, with the sun and a moon. So that's the sun and the moon and a star came. So that kind of, those sun, moon and star came together. Um, the key, I have two keys. I'm kind of using for big and little keys, uh, big and little success. And then money, because I saw, I think on Kristen's, a post that she had a penny and a nickel uh, sort of for big money and little money so I'm kind of using that in terms of finances um, I found this anchor in a set with this anchor uh, this uh, heart with the cross on it that I'm using for burdens the cross card which I kind of like the idea that the cross is on the heart it's that sort of emotional burdens and that kind of thing so that's my cross and then something else oh this this fish hook came with it which I love I kind of feel that like getting caught you're like caught on something uh, I love that so that came with that little set as well so the, these are the ones that I have um, for the Lenormand that, that match for me to the Lenormand cards. And my goal right now is to work at trying to fill that out and finish that set eventually. And then these other ones, like I said, I have this, I, I really liked this hook, this idea of being caught and trapped. I have this little, I don't even know what you guys are able to be able to see these or not, but this is a little tiny crown that kind of made me think of duties and responsibilities. Um, these two I think are kind of similar. I probably will end up using one or the other maybe. This is a spiral that goes inward. And I kind of have that sense of digging deep and kind of going internally. Um, but this is like a mandala, which kind of has the same sense uh, kind of finding a peaceful place, kind of uh, finding, re uh, returning to balance, a uh, sort of thing, you know. Um, so those two are kind of similar. I'm not sure if I will keep them both in or not, but for right now I am. I found this nice little uh, round one with a hole in it, and it says discover. Now the other side says nothing, so this is kind of nice because, you know, if it comes up one way, it's that idea of being able to discover. It kind of made me think of like a hagstone, being able to see and discover um, something new, and if it's turned over where you're not being able to discover it, it could be something that's blocked, but I'm not sure. Again, I'm just getting started. Here I have an airplane, which is kind of be for travel, you know, faster travel, obviously, than the journey card uh, would be. And I did have this originally for the ship, but it's so much faster than a ship. And then when I saw this with journey, I thought that was perfect. I got this cute little, um, like, shell, like almost like a hermit crab shell. That's sort of finding your home where you are. <laughs> Of course, here's a little owl uh, for like wisdom. Whoops. Um, here I have a little hummingbird, which kind of speaks to me about um, life being short. You know, the beauty and the speed of life, but it's so beautiful, even though it's quick. And um, I'm not sure. I've not fully developed what this is going to end up showing, but it just has that beautiful sense. You know, their lives are so short, but they are so incredibly stunning. Um, yeah. So something with that. Uh, this is a sand a sand dollar. Yeah, this would be a sand dollar. And I kind of like this for the five. This has, you know, the little five uh, star in the middle of it. And that kind of speaks to me of the elements. So we have the four elements plus spirit. Um, I love this arrow kind of to do with fast movement. Um, you know, needing to make a quick uh, choice or something like that. A fast movement, depending on what that's pointing at. I have a little Eiffel Tower that was going to be my tower one but until I found this clock tower, which I loved so much. Um, so this, you know, might to do more with, um, I haven't decided. Sometimes I get the idea of, um, you know, traveling to different, but I have kind of two traveling and journey ones. But the Eiffel Tower brings up to me that ideas of, of old black and white movies and, you know, kind of romance movies and, um, so I'm not sure. I haven't, this one I haven't decided on yet because it was sort of my tower for Lenormand and got swapped. So I haven't quite decided on that one. If you have an idea for that, please let me know. 
Um, here I have a I Ching coin, and so uh, this is for me as Yang, and this is Yin when I cast I Ching because I had extras uh, from my three set that I have. And so this, you know, depending on which way it flows up, you know, maybe more masculine and feminine energy is going on with whatever it's close to. Um, I have this lovely uh, lotus that used to be a pair of earrings that broke off. Actually, this was an earring, too, that had broke. Um, but obviously, everything that comes with lotus. Lotuses are very important to me. Um, so that idea of the understanding that you need the muck and the mire of life in order to have the beautiful lotus. Um, so so many things that that encompasses. Um, this was, again, from my grandmother. I need to clean it up. I can't remember what. It says something on the back, and I'm not sure what. Um, but to me, this speaks of my grandmother. It speaks of nurturing. I, I, I get that sort of nurturing feel from this, almost like one of the queens kind of feel. And then I got this little camera because I felt, um, for me, photography, because I am a photographer. I did it for quite a while. <clears throat> as a business is taking portrait photography and one of the things about photography for me is about gaining a new perspective you know instead of just kind of seeing things head on get a little bit lower go over to the side cock things at an angle you know kind of gaining a new perspective that's what i see with this card a card <laughs> this uh charm uh, this is a, a sister thing i just had laying around this has i think i had multiple ones but this one particularly says sister and so it's sort of that idea of family um, that I had. Um, this is a Celtic knot and because of my use of the chrysalis tarot, uh, if you look at the, is it the hermit? No, I can't remember. One of the cards uh, it has an owl on it with Celtic knot work and the Celtic knot uh, that's in the photograph is a representation of tapping into the collective unconscious. And so I've, that's kind of um, what I'm using that for. And then I had this world one, and so that is sort of the idea that the world is bigger than the situation, that, you know, something around along that line. <laughs> um, and then I have these, again, I had some extra ones, too, that I decided, I, they were almost too many. I think I have a total of, I came with a set of 12. Um, so I took a couple of them out, but these I thought were important. We have inspire, listen, believe, breathe, simplify, and imagine. And then obviously have the journey one that I'm using for the ship. And these, when I was kind of playing around with this yesterday, you know, if, it, if they, they were flat, you know, not showing, I didn't pay as much attention. I pay attention to the ones that were face up and then, what, of course, what they were around. So these so right now are, I think I have around 50, um charms all together uh, I'll have to count them up but I think I have around 50 of them and so these are what I have right now and what you would do with these then is let me get my little cup because I did get a cup or I have a cup that I use actually you know what I mean I had an idea see if these are going to fit. Oops. Thank goodness for being able to pause something on here. I don't, I think these are going to fit. This wouldn't be good for casting, but I think I'm actually going to keep them in there because how cute is that? A friend of mine gave me that a long time ago. I really didn't have anything to do with it, but I'm not sure how it will do for, it will kind of be concentrated coming out of the hole. I don't know. Right now I'm going to use this, which is what I've been, been kind of playing with. So. You, do, you, do, you need some kind of, um, I have again, this is not a tutorial because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to, after showing you those, I just want to give you a rough idea of what you do. And I would highly suggest that you, uh, again, go visit the links that I have here so you can read up on it more if it, it fascinates you like it did me. Um, I will definitely um, come back and do more of a tutorial style video once I, you know, have worked with this a while. But you want some sort of um, 
either a box or I did yesterday I just got a piece of scrapbook paper which is about the size this is a lid to where I keep uh, pieces of scrapbook paper um, but you kind of want size because when you cast this you know things that are above here can be what's you know up above if you have a lot of stuff that are down here you may be feeling um, weighed down um, if you have stuff up here you may have too much going on in the mind if the, you can have sort of past you know if it's up against so much over here a lot of past things present and kind of think of future so there's things that you can do um, and so you do want to kind of be able to uh, have a defined, you know, mat of some sort, some way of defining your edges, so to speak. Um, and so what you would do is shake that, and it's probably horribly loud. It's, it's probably going to be really bad. But then you would cast it, and again, I'm sure there's a better way to cast that, but I just kind of want to give you an idea for it. And then you would kind of treat it like Lenormand. Um, so if, let's say, you are... Well, the first thing that I would do, because this is what I do with Lenormand, is find the, uh, for me, so if I'm the significator, find the woman, um, signi here's the male right here, up there I am, up there. So there's a significator up there in the kind of realm of the brain. And I do have a key to success, right? Um, and so you can start to think, okay, well that's pointing to the clock tower, which is a tower card. It says a key, my key of success may be kind of stepping back uh, a little while and, and rethinking things, although I am kind of up here um, in, I have a lot of duty maybe way up in my mind thinking of dealing with things uh, duty wise. Um, but you, then you can start to look for, and again, <laughs> I really didn't shake this well or probably cast it well. Um, and I'm not, so I'm not going to, um, and I don't really know a whole lot what I'm doing, but just to give you this sort of idea. So here, like I'm kind of looking at these um, cards that have flipped upright, but not cards, I keep calling them cards. Uh, so I, these things that have flipped up, I'm putting, you know, significance because they are flipped up. Um, here we have simplify with the anchor card. So there's some things that, you know, that so you would kind of find the anchor card for work and think, okay, there's some things that I need to simplify things down. It might be starting to get out of control and be a little bit messy and I need to simplify things down. Of course, this I haven't really decided what this is standing for, so... You know, we'll have to come back to that. Um, but you'd find your different significators. So if you were going to look for the, you know, let's say a relationship, um, you would, of course, look for the heart. We have yang energy. So we do have a masculine energy coming there. Um, you could kind of maybe think of this. I don't know. And that's one of the things I'm going to have to learn more about. Do that they need to like physically, like, I'm just doing this to show, but do they need to be more physically touching? Um you know, there may be a journey that uh, with this relationship uh, that has been cut short because we have this here. Um, again, I'm not taking this as an actual reading because I didn't sit there and focus on anything. <laughs> um, but here we can have success. And so he, I love this little three, almost like a three card right there. So basically we have mountain, key, and... Um, the garden. So we have, you know, sort of uh, obstacles. There's that sense of the mountain car. There's been obstacles. Uh, things have been difficult for a while, um, but we're moving towards success, and it has something to do with um, a gr bigger group of people. Um, sometimes, you know, they think of this as to do with the internet, um, sort of the social groupings and things like that, and maybe seeing those things in a new perspective because we have this little line going right here. Um, so we also over here have this card of breathing, which is that sort of, to me, taking a breath. You know, you just need time to take a breath. Um, and we have, fine, you know, uh, larger financial issues. I just need to take a breath on those and not be so stressed about it. Um, so that would be something that I might look at. Um, so... Again, this is just a really, we have this turning up way uh, down here or something I'm apparently not too concerned about, the um, greater world issues. Uh, so maybe I need to be like paying more attention to world politics or something because I'm not paying attention to it. Um, so anyways, again, uh, this is such 
Um, see now on my balance can kind of be thrown off because that's been flipped upside down although again it's not really next to anything I'm over here it's over here if you think about the kind of the rules of Lenormand proximity is is what's most important you know that wouldn't be necessarily something that I would be too concerned about because it's too far away uh, now for me the moon is often to do with my secondary business so if work is my primary kind of uh, breadwinner pays my bills the moon cards for me when I'm doing readings about somebody who has a side business that they're trying to um, their kind of heart business a business that they're trying to build because it's important to them is my moon and so I have that and it's right with the Sun which is you know that's a positive sign although it is turned over um, so you can now that's again I, I'm guessing that sort of goes along the lines of do you read tarot reversals or not read reversals um, but you kind of still, it was over, you know, the, the sun was over the top of it. So that to me is a very positive thing that that's kind of going in the right direction. I have certainly good feelings about that. Um, so this is kind of what you would do. Um, and again, you'd more solidly define what your different areas mean. And it's, I think it's awesome. Uh, this probably is not the most interesting of ones, although there are some cool things here. And I really do like these cards uh, where you can focus... Sorry. I like these um, coins here that have the words on them because then you really can focus on what is upright as being an important message. And I also really like the I Ching because you do get the yin and the yang. Um, so I'm going to try to wrap this up because I'm trying not to make this too long because I just, this is mostly to do with, oh my gosh, isn't this really cool? Have you heard of this? Have you tried this? Um, <laughs> you know, do you have charms laying around that you can try this with? And we should start a charm swap. <laughs> So, um, anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed this quick little look at the idea of charm casting. Take a look at the links that I put below and uh, let me know what you think about this and whether you've heard about it. 